to speak. Nothing bad. Thank you. One. That's good. I'm um, bad. Oh. <laughs> You're a bit late. Where was that? Five seconds ago. Um, okay, so I'm Rona um, and the Arts and Culture Coordinator at the Rockfield Centre. Um, my colleague Caroline's here as well. She's going to come in a wee bit later on. Um, we are. Here we go. Right. Okay. Back on track. Um, okay, so yes, we're from the Rockfield Centre Open Communities Trust. Um, and just a quick before I start, just to say we're not a heritage organisation as such, we're not a museum, and um, we're not really experts in this particular field, but we are a, a community organisation with heritage as a strong theme running through it. Um, and over the last year, since we've been in operation, we've done a couple of heritage projects, and that's what we're going to talk about a wee bit this morning, just sort of tell you what we've been up to over the last year. Um, a wee bit about the background. This is our main building at the Rockfield Centre. It's a former primary school. It was Rockfield Primary School until 2007, and it was the main primary school for Oban for what, 130 years. So a lot of children, including my grandmother and great grandfather, and I'm sure other relations of people in the room, maybe even former pupils in the room here. Um, it's a much loved building in Oban. In 2014, it was going to be demolished. Um, the school had been moved out seven years previously, and there was then a community campaign to try and stop that. People seemed to feel quite strongly that they didn't want to lose the building. And there was a petition, there was a postcard campaign, there were public meetings, and the result was that Open Communities Trust was established as a vehicle to take forward a bid for community ownership of the site. And um, from that point, there were pop-up events, a Facebook page was created, and um, there was a lot of community consultation events to work towards putting together a business plan and making the community um, buy a bid for the site to the council. And through that, themes came out, one of which was heritage, alongside arts and culture, education and enterprise, and community wellbeing. So from the off, heritage was kind of identified as something that people felt should be a part of whatever the building was going to become in the future. Um, ultimately, it was successful and the um, community took ownership of the building in May 2015, so just over a year ago. And so very quickly we moved on to our first heritage project as per the community consultations we kind of wanted to, to get a heritage project off the ground quite quickly and um, we made a successful application to Heritage Lottery Fund for a project called Memories Matter, A Time to Tell Our Stories and the idea behind the project was that it focused <coughs> on post-war years, the decade of 1945 to 1955 and focused on children's experiences and um, in particular still children's experiences and part of the thinking behind that was that it was a chance for us to sort of shine a light on the, the memories of former pupils of the school before there was a new chapter for the building and it went on to become something else. Um, so that's what we focused on. We um, were able to get in a part time coordinator to take that project forward, which was fantastic. And we held a series of events and um, coffee mornings, things like that, got um, former pupils both at Rockfield and at other schools to come forward who were happy to contribute their memories and we then started recording memories and stories <coughs> from those participants. Um, we were working towards a final exhibition and along the way we held kind of preview events, and little update events to try and keep the sort of um, community engagement along the way. And we had this um, this poster in the middle here is our final exhibition which took place in November last year called Post for Childhood. Um, and as part of that we, we had our little recordings, we did some um, volunteers did some research, we had some help from Denali who are here as well, and we were able to borrow some objects from the Hope Dougal collection, which is um, at Denali. Um, we also had some private um, items from people 
that were part of that as well. We had some photographs that people came forward with, but the main main element of the exhibition was stories. We really focused a lot on the stories and the words um, that people had actually shared with us. So that was that was a big kind of a big part of the exhibition. This here is Anne. She's one of the she's a former pupil, um, and she was one of the people who contributed to the project. Um, and that up there is one of the, the sort of events we had as part of the, um, the journey towards the exhibition, sort of getting, gathering stories, kind of generating interest. And um, the exhibition was only up for three days, it was quite a short thing, but we had 150 folk in over those three days and really nice feedback. And it was, it was good to get something under our belt quite quickly. Um, and particularly in heritage as that had been and identified as, as a theme and an area of interest. So, after that, um, what next? Interested volunteers were keen to remain involved, and um, so we had some get-togethers with them to talk about what we might do next. At 2016, as some of you will know, is the year of innovation, architecture and design, and as part of that, um, we got involved with the Festival of Architecture, and we in August hosted an open festival of architecture. So when we knew that was coming, we then kind of joined the dots and the heritage volunteers started working towards um, researching the built heritage in Morgan. So the buildings, a bit about their architecture, but mainly the stories behind them and the people who were involved with them. And so that kind of kick-started our next project. Um, our volunteers researched the buildings, the came up with a walking route um, and the idea that we would run these guided walks. So we went out and tested the walks. They, we put together a map, which is um, a little leaflet that has some information about different points. So if you don't make it onto the walk at lunchtime, you can still get one of our heritage trail maps and then you can just go and visit places on your own. And um, that's the kind of self-guided thing, although it does go along with the guided walk. So that we've got them over in the other room on our, on our uh, stall. So as part of the Festival of Architecture, we ran four of these walks and this is this is John here, um, postman by day, heritage walk to tour guide by sort of later in the day. Um, and we had a really nice sunny day for the first walk which was fantastic. Um, so yeah that was that was uh, a really good experience again because all four walks sold out and were really popular and um, the volunteers were quite kind of boosted by that I think and keen to do more so it was a kind of good confidence builder um, and also from the Rockwood Centre's point of view we're now looking at trying to um, maybe have some sort of social enterprise around that where we can where we're able to maybe make that a visitor attraction and be able to employ somebody on a very part-time basis to, to do that. So, you know, trying to generate a bit of work and uh, a bit of income with that. Um, over the winter, um, now that that's kind of under our belt, the volunteers are looking at um, trying to archive some of the materials that we've unearthed over the last year. And um, part of this project was putting the, the photographs and the research behind the buildings onto our website so that people could access that even if they couldn't come and actually be part of the walk. So we do have that on our website but we're kind of aware that that's it's really only just scraping the surface so we're now kind of investigating what we can do um, along those lines to try and um, share more of the, the research that, and the materials that have kind of been unearthed. And that's really where um, Scotland's Urban Past comes in. Um, we were lucky enough to have them up to lead a couple of workshops with some of our volunteers. And um, Caroline, colleagues, going to just say a quick couple of words about um, what happened there. That was um, just a couple of weeks ago, and the volunteers uh, attended workshops. And that will kind of, I think, feed into what we, what we do next. So I'll hand over to Caroline. Unplug myself. Right, uh, yeah, Scotland's Urban Pass came up a couple of weeks ago and we had two very interesting workshops. Um, most of our heritage volunteers came along, plus some other interesting people, so we're quite a fluid group. Uh, the morning workshop was really looking at um, resources that we could use 
to do this kind of research. We were given sort of tasks to do looking at uh, places in Aberdeen, so it wasn't relevant to Oban as such, but it was relevant to skills that we could use and um, resources that we could use. Um, there was quite a lot of experience and knowledge in the group, um, but some people had no knowledge at all, so it was quite a mixed group. And part of the, what was really good about it was getting people to work together and sharing knowledge and passing it on to other people that didn't have it. So there was a lot of, we used things like old maps, um, they, people they brought along printed maps, we were also looking at the, um, the uh, National Library archives online, so we could look at the maps online. Um, we were also using things like the Dictionary of Architects, uh, and they also brought along architects' plans that we could get um, to look at. Um, the particular bit I was involved in, we were looking at a plan of some new buildings um, that were going to be built in 1894. So there was the architect's plans and design, as you can see quite clearly. So what we did next was we went onto Google Street View to look at that road now in Aberdeen. And there was the building, but it wasn't quite the same as the plan. It was bigger than the plan, so that was okay. Let's find out when that plan got changed and up upgraded. Um, then my colleague was looking on the newspaper archives online and we found an article about the opening of the building and who designed it, so that tied in as well. Uh, then we were looking at people in the buildings, so we looked at the censuses, the valuation records. Um, we discovered that the plan was, for, was in 1894, but the census record in 1891 had people living on that street. So it's like, okay, let's have a look, see what we can find out about the previous building. So we were then again looking online, managed to find an older map, and there was a block on that street, and that was the only building there. So that was, okay, what happened to that building? So it just, it, it, everything fed on from each thing that we found out. Other groups were looking at other buildings in the same uh, city um, with connections. So there were sort of three different groups all sort of working together. They, one of the things we learned was how to look at old maps, because you get these big maps and they're all very different from 1763 up to 1920. So we realised that if you find the oldest building that's on the map, you can use that building throughout the, the next maps to locate yourself. That was quite interesting to see the changes there. Um, so it was just, it was very good to be looking at different different resources, paper resources, online resources, modern resources, old resources, and working together. Um, the afternoon workshop was more to do with Canmore, which is the, the, the online um, archive of the Bill Heritage. And we looked at Oban, and there's well over 100 sites on there, most of which have very little information. And some, actually, there was one it was lamppost in Stevenson Street. <laughs> and it was like, well, what's that all about? So we have talked as the group at some point, along with all the archive that we're going to be looking at, is to sit down and just go through some of these sites. Because as Rona said, we have lots and lots of stories in our group, and lots of knowledge, um, as well as lots of old photographs. So we can add a lot of value to all these sites. So it's going to be a long-term project, that one. But sit down and look at each site, find out what it means, produce the story, produce the photographs, add some value to it. So that's another scheme to our project. So yeah, they're both very, very useful um, workshops. It's having the time to actually do all these things. Obviously we want to do more than we have time for, but we've got some very good volunteers. Um, and hopefully we'll just continue what we've started. It's really very useful. Okay, thank you very much.